Well, we're working on bullet collators today, and I thought I'd show you my progress and give you a little bit of insight. This is going to be part one in a two or three or four part series, whatever works out. And it's going to be how to set up a homemade bullet collator. Now, it doesn't matter whose bullet collator you're designing yours after, whether it's a 3D printed collator or whether it's a handcrafted collator cut out of commonly available materials. Um, part one, I'm just going to show you kind of what's going on with this one and what I'm planning on doing and give you a little bit of overview and a little bit of an opinion on some stuff that's going on with them. And in the next part, why I'll show the wiring on it because the wiring with the speed control and optical limit switches can be a little bit confusing. So I want to go into that into detail. And then we'll see where we go from there and see if we can't get this set up. This is my basic bullet collators. These are going to go on my Dillon 550s is where I'm going to add them on. This project's going to not be a real quick project because they're going to mount on case feed collators that I want to build for them and I'm not that far yet so I've just built me a little stand since I've got a couple of these to wire up and um, it holds it in probably a mount I may or may not use this style mount on the when I mount them on the dill and I think there's a couple of other things that I ideas that I might like better but for here on the bench why I can rotate rotate this mount my electronics and stuff do all my soldering and everything and I basically got a, a nice little work stand that I can lock in pretty much any position to assemble these one of the other things I've done is uh, I've added a little mirror to go on top and this is my own 3D design we've drawn this up in fusion and um, so it just sits on top of the collator like that. Once it's actually positioned, if I use this as a final design, is we can add a couple of tension screws on the side to hold it in place. Our mirror is adjustable to whatever angle is best to be able to see what's going on. This is a cheap little 99 cent mirror from our local craft store. and I just designed a little holder to slide on here. We may change it out, redesign those brackets a little bit and put a little bit bigger mirror on so we've got a little bit bigger field of view. But Anyway, this works. I've had it mounted on the uh, on the bullet collator. So anyway, I'll uh, I've got some time lapse of printing these out. We're just going to go ahead and run that, and uh, I'll kind of explain what's going on with this. Well, what we've got here is just a little time lapse of printing out this um, collator body. Um, these don't necessarily have to be 3D printed. They can be done out of PVC pipe. There's several ways, and at some point in time, I may expand on that. That I guess is kind of a little disclaimer. What I actually want to show with this series is just how to set up a collator of your homemade design, no matter what design you're using it, whether it's 3D printed, whether it's manually machined out, or whatever the case may be. Uh, there's been some dispute, I guess. This this file originally came off the of Thingiverse, and it's no longer there. Um, normally when I see that happen, I expect a someone has bought up the, the rights to that design and they're going to produce it commercially. Uh, what I hear through the through the grapevine, and this is only secondhand knowledge, is that uh, there's some sort of a patent dispute going on, which I find kind of interesting all of a sudden happening now since people have been designing this same basic design or working on the same basic design of call later for about the last seven or eight years. If you go back, there's, there's videos from a couple of different individuals from about 18, eight years ago. And one of those has developed into a commercial operation. The other has been somebody just doing open source stuff. And uh, now suddenly there's some dispute over it. So I hear that's why part of these files are gone, or these files are gone off of it. So I welcome your comments below, although any reference to any of the individuals involved in that little dispute, I'm going to delete out of the comments. I don't feel the need to advertise for a commercial manufacturer that I don't agree with exactly the way they've done. Um, and at some point in time, if, if we feel a need to have a discussion about that, we can. But anyway, like I say, I'm going to show you how to wire them up. That can be a little bit confusing when you start getting the optical switches in them and the relays and that type of thing. So uh, we'll cover that in detail in the next, in the next uh, build. I do have the collator working on my star lubricizer. It still needs a little bit of adjustment, but it's a, the design's proven. It works well, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. We'll show the final products of that at some point in time. But... I mainly wanted to show the design and building of these. Now I think there's some things that can be improved along the way and it does relate back to I guess part of the dispute that I hear is going on and that I guess kind of I, I, from what I understand kind of revolves around the flipper design. Um, 
there's a couple of ways that I think that I've already stated I think could be handled better in that. One of them is, I think, the thickness of the bullet plates. I think those can be redesigned and worked very, and made to function well in very much the similar way that the plates are for a case collator. Um, I think you can use a thinner plate and at least to some degree use the weight of the bullet or the base heavy weight of the bullet that you're going to have with most style bullets to help orient them properly in the, in the uh, shell plates themselves to feed in the proper orientation. And the other is I think the little spring arm that will kick out bullets that aren't seated correctly, I think that can be redesigned to take a nose down bullet and eject it in a basically a go no go gauge type of or a go no go situation. Either the bullet's oriented correctly or else it gets ejected out and uh, falls back to the bottom of the collator and will will have to start the process over again, which is going to be a little bit slower. You know, you potentially are going to have a certain percentage of those bullets that are going to have to go through the, the whole feeding process again, which isn't that big a deal. The, the um, wheels on the bus have to go around and around, and that, that plate is going to be spinning even as it nears being empty. So um, I don't anticipate that being a problem with not being able to keep up with, with your reloading as you operate the the press arm itself, so that to me is a non-issue, and I think that could very well eliminate a whole lot of issues with the, with maybe some certain bullets jamming as they would rotate through the ramp or that type of thing. So, anyway, those are just things that I think I'll play with as the time goes on. You know, it it, uh, and, and I guess this goes back to why I disagree with the position that's been that's happening right now or the the way this is being done because. I know some of the people that have built these collators in the past have been buying components from the main manufacturer. They've been more than happy to sell them and now apparently they've either gotten a patent pushed through or decided to exert their rights on that patent or whatever the case may be. And now they've pulled the available files down off of, or had the files pulled down off of Thingiverse. I'm assuming they were pulled down by the individual that put them up there. Um, I don't know the circumstances of any of that, but, um, you know, this, this system cost me, I figure, about $50 a piece to, to print one out and build it at all the electronics, and um, the commercial system is in excess of $600, so that puts it out of the reach of most of the individuals that are going to be reloading on a 550 or even a 650, um, and yes, you can absorb that cost, but when you can have a product that you can have the satisfaction of having built yourself and installed on your own equipment, why to me that's a big advantage. And um, without me building my own, I would not have collators on my on my 550s at this point in time. So, anyway, that's our little 3D printed project for now. Uh, like I say, in the next installment we'll do a pretty in detail on the wiring. We'll mount the motors on and everything. So, anyway, hopefully you found something a little bit interesting there. If you did, I hope you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.